Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a quick video of all of the new changes that we released with the contact buttons. Um, rather than make it super formal, I'm just going to go through and sort of point out some of the cool stuff that we have available now. So uh, first off, I want to point out the user menu. So this is using our new top navigation theme that's going to be released in the next couple weeks. I'm still testing some of the bugs and everything on it and making sure it's all perfect and everything. But what I was waiting for is, as you know, you get way too many things in the menu to make this workable. So first thing that I'm doing is you'll see here under the menu configuration, I am hiding a bunch of menus and changing some of the names of the menus here like that. So. You'll see here we've got pipeline instead of opportunities, and we're missing a lot of um, items here. So uh, now that we've got these sort of renamed, and so just to show you how it works real quick. So if you're going to edit a menu, um, here what we'll do is we'll go here, say we're going to change um, conversations to inbox. What you'll do is you'll say like this, make sure to change it, and then click add here. Now, in this case, I want the chat icon. So here we go. I'm going to add that. Now we've got inbox with that name there and hit save. So uh, that is what makes it look like that. Now, the next thing that you'll see here is that we've got um, the contacts and calendar normally aren't in that position. So what we're doing is we are hiding contacts and scheduling because that's the main item that calendar is under. We're hiding contacts and scheduling and putting uh, contacts and calendar over here. Now that does get rid of the whole contact area. So if that's a problem, then maybe you want to recreate that as a contact action area because you can still do drop down menu items if you want to. I just didn't do that. Anyway. So um, now that we've got that sort of set up, and you'll notice I also hid settings and chat widget. So what you can do now is under user menu, you can say um, chat settings. And here's a pro tip. So under chat settings, normally the way this works is you have to find the internal menu item that you want to link it to. But chat, chat settings, I think, may not be in here. So what you end up doing, what you have to do is you have to find it normally. So in this case, I've already put it up here. So um, because we are using, um, I was using an app there, which I guess I have to show you guys how to do in a bit. So this is the link, right? So um, you'll just copy that link and put it, so you'll go over to where it says target, and you say paste link target, and then you copy that, and, or sorry, then you paste that link, right? So I literally just copied the entire link, and then you just paste it, and it, it knows that it's a, a internal menu link, so it reformats it correctly, and now we have it set up right. So what I'd like to do here, and I'm saying no icon because, um, I think it looks better with no icon. Um, and we'll say general settings. So then you just hit publish. And we'll refresh this here. All right, there we go. So now you'll see here that we've got all these settings down here. I um, think there's something I need to fix. That's just the top note of the theme. So anyway, so now you got your chat settings, your trigger settings, and your mail settings, and your general settings. I think this pretty, is freaking awesome because now you can tell people, just go to the settings area, go to the mail settings, and now you they can go to integrations that way rather than trying to go to settings and then find the one that's hidden inside of the settings. So you can highlight those sections there. Um, I do love that new uh, 
feature that was just launched today, the Launchpad. Um, but what I've done is I used an internal menu item. So you'll see here, um, the way I got this set up is get connected goes to the launch pad. So I just pasted that link right there. So now you can say get connected and it'll take you straight to here. So that's pretty cool. All right. So next, let's take a look at the, um, Oh, on this real quick. So how I got the contacts and calendar up here, what I was going to show you is we're recreating this here and we're saying it's going to the contacts and smart list. And I'm pointing out where in the menu it's going to appear. So in this case, I want it to appear after conversations, which was, which is inbox. And after that, then I organize it. So, um, calendar is also being placed after conversations. And I'm just ordering the sequence right here. So they're both placed after conversations. It's just calendar comes at the end. All right, so trying to make this fast, but uh, also not too fast. Uh, next thing is what I'm so excited about, and I really wanna see what you guys are doing with this, but there's contact buttons. So what a contact button is, is it is these buttons that you'll see up here at the top in the conversation view and in the contact area. And uh, so here, let's take a look at this one right here. And there's a sample button. And uh, what we can do is you can use this to show your additional info fields I'll just show you over here what it will look like. So let's set this up. So I'm going to say um, intake form. And we'll make this a nice um, thing here. All right. And you can say, if you say no color, you can do a selector to, you can say like, um, uh, custom button and this lets you make the style of this button powered by your theme so that's pretty awesome for now we're going to do the color and you have a couple options so you can make it so that this simply saves a tag so what I would do then is I would say send review request and then you would say something like review and then you'll need to set up a trigger in here to make it so that the um, it sends out the review when the ad sorry when the tag is added um, and you have the option of marking it as read archiving the com conversation and requiring confirmation so that's this other people are using this to mark as one um, also to fire off different web hooks um, all sorts of cool stuff. I actually want to get sort of a, a feed going and I want to see what people at, people are doing because there's a lot that can be done. So this is what I was going to show you though. So take a look at the intake form. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the link and all right. So this is just an example of how we can present this data. All right, so you can put that link right there. I'm not gonna bother with the title, but this will send all of the contact extra data to the uh, to this form. So here, let's publish to live. All right, so here's the intake form and uh, if you click it, you'll see it pops open and it sent all the data there. Um, this is this is just a test, but you can really put all of the data you want in this. The signature doesn't work, kind of expected there. You can't really pre-fill um, the signature on a form like that. But um, let's go over here and see how it looks in the contact itself. So here's the contact, and you'll see if you look in the additional info, um, this particular account has literally almost 200 additional info fields. Um, so it can take a little while to load. But 
you'll see we've got all this data and the additional info, as well as if I unhide that, a massive amount of additional info. So if I were the client, I would hate having to scroll through this stuff and maybe even find the stuff that I need. Um, so what's so cool is that you can now put any buttons you want up here and you click that link and it pre-fills all the data just like that. And they can even just, you can go like this. And one other cool pro tip is that if we go back to the form builder, so why not? I mean, we know what their name is. We're not going to change their name. Why don't, we, why don't we hide this data here? So like we could hide all of this data. You have to have, you have to have the um, name, email, all that stuff, because that's how um, high level uh, finds the contact to update. So if you don't have this info in here, you're not going to save it to the contact itself. So you have to have this, but we can hide it. So that's pretty great. Um, so in this case, let's get rid of this. So maybe you just want to be able to like fill out a little bit of a questionnaire right here, right? So let's just save that and go to the contact. So here we are in the contact. And now they can literally just fill out the data that they need and save. So this is just amazing. The other thing you can do, I don't know if you know this, but you can actually send it to a funnel. So you can use this for a script. All right, so here's like a sales script, a demo sales script. So what you can do actually is like, so I saw that you saw whatever, right? This is just an example, but what you can do here is you can do the example of how they embed stuff. So so the way it works is actually it takes the your like the data that you send to it. So I would say uh, first name like that. Let's do this as an example. All right, just like that, and we'll leave the rest empty for right now. Um, and then we'll do a preview. Get this link here. You'll see that they take out that first name thing. Um, so. Let's do a new one here and say sales script and put this here and we'll just send it like that, like so. And now we have uh, two buttons and if we pull up the sales script, you'll see it merges and it says, hi Tom. And you can even, um, if you wanted to go back to that funnel, which I'm going to take the short way to get there. Let's go this and use quick editor. All right, so here we are on the form. Uh, so you can even, I would probably do it like this. I would bold that so that the user knows that it's filled from the CRM here like that. So not this one, this one right here. And um, I have another idea of how we're going to make it so that um, you could pull up like maps and things like that. And keep in mind, you don't have to use, you don't have to use high level. You can send this data anywhere you want. You could build, uh, uh, you could actually have hire someone to build a form or something like this or a page that does other stuff that you need to be able to integrate. This opens the door tremendously to easily uh, create this stuff. Lastly, okay, two more things on the contact buttons. So you're like, great, that's awesome, but this link is connected directly to this location. So how is it going to work? How is it going to be scalable for the rest of the locations? So it's not scalable, right? So the way that we're going to handle that is this. You got two ways of handling this. Number one, you can put your custom button, your contact button, excuse me, onto the location itself. So you can put that right here, but now you've got to add a new location for each one. 
So that's not quite as helpful. Um, but what's cool is that you can actually use custom values. So if we go to the settings, and we're going to get the intake form. So we'll put this right here. We'll pick that and go to custom values. And this you can send using automations and stuff like that. So I'll call this one the intake form. And this is my link. And so now what you can do is you can use this right here. And if you put that in there, note this extra space here. That is going to kill it. So get rid of that extra space. Make sure there's nothing there. Good. You are good to go. So now this is automatically populated. And I also even had, um, I'm pretty sure I built this in. I'll have to test this later. Actually, let's do it now. So uh, what I did was I was like, what if you don't have a value for the custom intake form? Then we shouldn't show this at all. So, so let's see what happens. Yeah, so there you go. So this one doesn't have that custom value. Um, we switched to the animal eviction services and sales script still appears, but the other one doesn't appear. And uh, so there you go. So you don't have to worry about if the custom value is set or not, because if it's not there, it just won't show. All right, so that's that trick there. And then um, let's see. You've got the fact that it can append and replace. And also, if you add more locations, you'll see that you can have a CSS selector. And that will make it so that you can style groups of locations. And what that is useful for is for hiding features for these locations. So the idea behind this is you'd say level one. Now, all of these level one guys, you want to hide certain menu items. And you don't want to have to like make sure that the users are all set like that. So the way you do that is you don't mind all this extra CSS here. The way that you would do this is you would say, so this is called level one, and something like that. So you would say level one account user. And then, then you could say, um, so that's going to affect all the account users. And you could say like, say chat settings. I don't think that's a thing, but if, if you wanted to hide that chat settings, you would then say display none. Anyway, message me if you need help with this, but this is what it allows you to do. You can also say, I want this to be to affect all the account admins, that sort of stuff there. So there you go. Um, I think we hit on all the major updates. Um, overall, it's got a lot of sort of some feature uh, bugs. Like we really worked on fixing a lot of stuff, making sure that it was very solid. Took a long time to get this out to you guys. Um, I think the last thing is this right here. So I don't think I need to demo it, but it, it just works great. Let's you add address autocomplete. Well, here you go. So it just, you fill it out like so, and then it updates like that and uh, it works great. So there you go. Let's just make sure. Okay, I think we're set guys. So uh, let me know. I'm gonna post this to YouTube so that everybody can see it. Um, but on Facebook, please start letting me know what you guys are using contact buttons for. I would love to keep creating on this and see what else we can do and if you have any suggestions on how to tweak things or anything else i think someone else asked uh can we have um the ability to um remove a tag and i was like that's a great idea so we'll be adding that functionality here very soon all right thank you guys till next one thank you guys till next one